Welcome to this tech episode of FPV Reviews. Today we'll be showing you how to build our Tesla style battery. The battery we're building today is specifically for the Gemini version 2 FPV platform. The techniques shown here can also be used to build advanced battery packs for other aircraft as well. For the Gemini version 2, use of this style battery allows for a weight reduction of about 2 pounds when compared to LiPo batteries. We've tested the endurance of the aircraft using this battery and have flown for just over four hours without discharging it completely. This should allow for hundreds of useful cycles from this new type of battery. The cell technology has actually been around for a long time and had lots of development lately to the point where it is now useful for some high power applications such as aircraft and automobiles. Even as we're editing this video, a new cell type has become commercially available. A joint project between Panasonic and Sanyo, the NCR18650GA cells promise to have almost double the burst amperage as the Panasonic NCR18650B cells depicted in this video, and for a similar price. The difference between the two types will not affect the performance of the Gemini V2, However, it will be significant for aircraft with higher power requirements. Beware of brand X cells claiming much higher capacity than the brand name cells. Watch out for fakes, especially ones coming out of China. At this time, Panasonic and Sanyo make the best quality cells, and they come from Japan, although they have distributors worldwide. So let's get started building a Tesla style pack for the Gemini version 2. You'll need some tools. First, a digital voltmeter that can read to 1 100th of a volt. Almost all budget multimeters nowadays can. You'll need some side cutters too, and a pair of nail clippers are handy for the smaller wire we'll be using for part of the build. You'll need a pair of wire strippers. I prefer the automatic kind, but any way you have of stripping the insulation from the wire will do. You will need a good, high-powered soldering iron. This is pretty much a must because you need to heat the solder joints at the individual cells quickly before the cell has a chance to get too hot. Make sure you have an extra tip or two for the soldering iron. They don't last forever. No project should be without a good razor knife. I use a utility knife for some things too. A covering iron to put the finishing touch on the battery pack is nice, but not necessary, as you'll see later. A step bit and drill will be very useful to make ventilation holes in the sides of the pack's case for cooling, although you can probably find another way to make the holes if it's too hard for you to locate. You'll need 60 cells to make the Tesla-style pack for the Gemini V2. In this case, we're using genuine Panasonic NCR18650B cells. You'll need some 22 gauge wire. In this case, we're using the high-tech brand 22 gauge heavy duty servo wire. You'll also need some 16 gauge wire. Today, we're using some nickel plated marine wire that we had left over from a project. For the main power leads, you'll need some number 10 silicone wire. Rosin core solder is best for this application, but you'll want some extra flux as well. I like a Q-tip to use for an applicator. Some red and black heat shrink will be handy for the main terminal connections. For these, we prefer the XT90 connector. Some reinforced and plain packing tape will be handy to keep the pack safe in the event of an unscheduled landing. Lithium fires are no joke, even though the 18650 cells are encased in steel, and the chemistry is constantly improving to make the cells less likely to catch on fire, even when punctured. You'll also need a balance lead for your new Tesla-style battery. We reused one from an old LiPo pack. Some PVC foam board is a great material for encasing the battery pack, and it's easy to cut and drill. 
Monocoat is the perfect material to cover the finished pack, and the benefit of this is that you get to pick the color. Last but not least, no DIY project is complete without some small cable ties or nye ties or zip ties or whatever you want to call them. Start by inspecting each cell, and at a scale of 20 volts or so on the meter, check its voltage. It should be about 3.62 volts, and all the cells should be within 1 one hundredth of a volt of each other. Next, we'll arrange the cells in groups of 20, three groups with the polarity of each group alternating. It's important that they be grouped together tightly to fit into the airplane. Put a piece of tape around them to hold them together while the pack is assembled. Now we'll need some small 22 gauge wire lengths, stripped, twisted, and cut to about 7 eighths of an inch or 23 millimeters. You'll need about 60 of these. Put a slight bend in them, hold them down with some pliers so that you don't burn your hands, apply some flex to the ends, and pre-tin them with solder on both ends. Next, pre-tin the cells themselves, applying a small dab of flux first, a very minimal amount, then a small bead of solder. Get the solder iron plenty hot before touching it to the cell, and don't hold it to the positive side of the cell for any longer than one second, or the negative side for more than two seconds. If for any reason the solder doesn't take in that amount of time, pull the soldering iron away completely from that cell and move on to the next one. Come back later when the cell is completely cooled off to the touch and you can't feel its warmth anymore. You can try again at that time. As soon as you see the solder flow onto the cell, take the heat away. It's important that the cell itself not get too hot. After all the cells have cooled, use the pliers to solder the wire bridges you made previously to the cells in a diagonal pattern. Again, only touch the iron to the cell and wire long enough to get the solder to join and flow. No longer than that. This is how they should look. Next, we'll strip a length of 16 gauge wire to look like this and twist it to keep it together and easy to work with. It will be soldered in place to join 10 cells together. Note that the solder joints for the larger wire do not touch the individual cell. This is important to avoid transferring too much heat into the cell. Another identical piece of 16 gauge wire is made to join 10 cells each in parallel and then they are brought together to join the two groups of 10 into a group of 20 in parallel. The same goes for all the groups. In this case, the first group of 20's common positive will be joined to the second group of 20's common negative. On the other side of the pack, the common positive from the second group will be joined with the common negative of the third group. This is called series wiring, and with each series joint, the voltage increases. This pack is equivalent to a 3S LiPo pack in voltage, about 11.1 .1 volts nominal. It's also helpful to use some individual strands to hold the wires together when soldering them. Then remove the excess wire with the nail clippers. Use flex for the joint before soldering. Now time to strip the main power wires, 10 gauge, and solder them at the beginning and end of the series wiring, observing correct color and polarity. Again, use some flex and some wire strands to hold things in place. Plug your voltmeter into the end of the main wires and you should see the total voltage of the pack. In this case, as the, as the cells ship, about 10.88 volts. Now it's time to salvage that balance lead from that old LiPo pack that you have laying around. 
Everybody's got one of these, right? Before you remove it, observe and record how it is wired so that you can duplicate it on the new pack. In this case, an XH balance lead. Match these on the new pack, and it can now be charged by a normal LiPo charger. I'd like to make an extra long balance lead so that the pack can be charged while in the airplane. I also braid the balance lead wires to keep them tidy. I like to secure the balance leads with cable ties and all the wire leads to keep them safe inside the battery casing. Now it's time to wrap the pack with reinforced packing tape to hold it together firmly. Cut some pieces of the 1 8 inch PVC foam board to form a protective box around the pack. The following dimensions worked for me, but measure your pack as it might vary slightly. For the bottom piece, 85 by 200 millimeters. For the sides, 100 by 200 millimeters. For the ends, 78 by 97 millimeters. And for the top, 200 by 78 millimeters. Mark the sides for one inch increments and use the step drill bit to make the holes. This is for the ventilation. Now glue the foam board box together around the pack, leaving some holes for the wires to exit. PVC glue works just fine, but CA works as well. Use some more fiber reinforced tape around the top and ends of the pack, then switch to regular clear packing tape for the sides. As a finishing touch, Use the monocoat to cover the finished pack. And don't forget to cut out the ventilation holes with the number 11 X-Acto blade. You can now solder on your terminals. And check that the polarity is correct with the voltmeter. Also recheck that the balance lead reads the same as it did before you removed it from the old LiPo pack. This is what the finished Tesla style pack looks like. We want to thank you for watching this video, and we hope that this information was beneficial for you. So here at FPV Reviews, we're signing off, and have a good one.